Dear fellow believers, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We have a different way of looking at our relationships in this day and age as compared to when Jesus was around. And in Jesus' day, unlike our day, giving somebody your family name was not just a way of connecting genealogically, but it was a way of protecting yourself within the community. When people went from community to community, they wanted to know whose you were. Who did you come from? What family are you a part of? And if you're a part of the wrong family, the word spreads. And it's tough to live in a place, it's tough to live. Because in that day and age, relationships were the foundation of everything. Who you were related to, your family lineage is the most important thing. And so today, in the midst of what we call this Jesus' high priestly prayer here in chapter 17 of John, Jesus begins to shift the view of his disciples from God's earthly kingdom and work and draw them to start focusing in on what's going to happen after his death and resurrection when he departs from this kingdom. On Thursday of this week, we celebrated, or some in the mem members of the Christian community celebrated the day of ascension, the day in which Jesus left this kingdom. He didn't abandon it. He just departed from it. He removed himself from the view of the people around him and from the generations, your generation, the mine, and what's to come, from our vision. But he didn't leave us empty-handed. He prayed for us. We forget that in the midst of all of our lives, all of the things that we do, all the stuff that's going on, God invites us to do a simple act, to pray. And the most powerful, important thing you can do is to pray for one another. That when you pray to God for your neighbor, God is indeed working in their lives. St. James writes his letter about the same thing about prayer, about wrapping one another in prayer. And here today, Jesus talks about offering us protection. He girds us, so to speak, with this word of God. And we don't understand it quite the way they do, because we demand <coughs> proof, not truth. And for Jesus in his day and age, the truth of the fact is that when God's name is invoked, Satan runs scared. The only way to protect his children, his beloved after he left this kingdom, was to pray for them in God's name, in order that God's name might become active in their life and grab hold of them and protect them. It doesn't change the events of this world. As he says, we're still a part of this world. We live in it. So bad things indeed are going to happen. We were talking the other day, just yesterday, about some tragedies that take place in our communities. And we, it brought me back to my youngest nephew, my oldest sister, who before I graduated from high school had, I believe, two of his classmates killed in car accidents and one who committed suicide. And there is no amount of prayer changes that. But there is an amount of prayer that sounds that that offers God's word of protection and hope. And that's what Jesus reminds us. He says, this kingdom will do its worst to you. Don't get up in the morning and expect the world to love you, respect you, and treat you well because you're a Christian. Because you follow me, he says, you are an enemy of this kingdom. And it will come after you. But in my Father's name, truth be told, you will find protection. You see, we're all just passing through this kingdom. This is not our home forever for any of us. As one of my friends once said, in order to get to heaven, you've got to get out of this kingdom. And God's door out is the door of death, which is the door to eternal life. If you want to live, as Jesus said, you've got to die. And the world is more than willing to help us along that path because it hates us. But what does it hate? The world hates this. That our God has the truth. That our God is the only thing powerful enough to love our enemies. Why? Because he loved his enemies, you and me first. So much so he died for us. And that's what Jesus is talking about. In this high priestly prayer, he comes to you this day. And he says very simply, have no fear. I am still near. I love you. And I will never let you go. And the truth is, you are with me always to the end of the age.
Sometimes when we get to Matthew with the great commission about baptizing and reminding us that Jesus will be with us, but he reminds us today that in God's name, we are with him. So we are never departed. We are always with God. That's the great thing about days like this. For in this day, we united to God's eternal family, a new member. And he's not just Clayton Jack Ruddick. He is a child of God, son of the eternal Savior, one for whom Jesus died. That's a great day. This is a great day because we recognize three seniors who are graduating, two from high school, one from college, and commending them on their way in God's name so that God might protect them and lead them in life, that God's blessings may not end in this day but continue to the next. The protection of God is simply that God loves them quite and us enough to say, I've died for you. Now come, truth be told, you can live with me. Amen. I would invite you to rise and return to our community today. You know, of being chosen and having this fruit is that they are blessed for eternity. That they receive the riches of God in this kingdom and the next so that they may understand that God's love is so deep he's welcomed them into the eternal home in spite of what they've done. I've known a lot of people, and I'm sure you have too, very few of them, on their, well, none of them on their own, are worthy of the eternal kingdom. But because of their deep faith and love for God in Christ Jesus, we can see them entering even while they're in this kingdom. That's the first fruit. The fruit of God's blessing, of his welcome home and into the kingdom. And the second portion of the fruit that he talks about is this fruit of calling more people into the harvest. Of being a witness to God's love so that they too might believe and be included in the bosom of Abraham. Included in this new life, this new Jerusalem that St. John talks about of welcoming them into God's kingdom. We miss that sometimes because we want to talk about love. We want to talk about love because that's pretty easy to talk about, isn't it? Because we'd rather talk about God's love than do God's love. For you see, if you're going to do God's love, you have to be willing to lay down your life for the person you dislike the most. It's not about laying down your life for the ones you love. For God's love is given to those who don't deserve it. Paul writes to the church of Rome, while we were yet sinners. Actually, that's really soft. We didn't want to make that as harsh as this. As we, as we are a group of people who despised and hated God, he chose the appropriate time to come and die for us that we might live. That happened in the past and happens today. Well, we despise and hate God, he chooses to die for us. That's God's love. Love your neighbor. That's what this commandment is. And when you love your neighbor, you are to die for those who despise and hate you. Raise your hand if you're going to do that this afternoon. Good. I think I'll just go out to um, Mother's Day dinner then. I'm with you. But you see, that's what this is about. The true fruit, the blessing of God, is that Jesus does it. Because we can. It's not just that we won't, we can. It is beyond our human ability to die for somebody else. Now we might do it for our children or a good person. We might do it at the drop of a hat for, for a, a, a comrade in arms. But all in all, walking around the streets in the Midwestern part of the United States in Marshalltown, it just isn't going to happen. But don't worry, God is taking care of it. Upon which that pivots is simply this. God says, I chose you. And when God chooses you, he's done the hard lifting. I chose you that you may go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. So have no fear. You're bearing good fruit. And it will last unto eternity. Live in that fruit. Love your neighbor. Return to the Lord your God in repentance. Believe in his forgiveness. Taste it in the meal. And by all means, live well with this God who has chosen you. 
for he is the author and giver of eternal life. Amen. Thank you.